the Hoffman Show on the Team 980, always live as well on your home for Wizards basketball, the free Odyssey app. And joining us now is the head coach of the Washington Wizards, Wes Unsell Jr. Uh, Wes, I haven't had the chance to talk to you since uh, since media day. Nothing really happened since then, so I assume this will be a nice, nice quick interview, huh? <laughs> it's always smooth sailing. Yeah, nothing, nothing to talk about uh, this time of year. Um, let's actually just start real quick, uh, update wise. KP rolled his ankle the other night. Um, obviously, it has been an incredibly frustrating year, injury wise. What is the latest on him and his availability this week? Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, it, it's tough. We've had to go through quite a few bumps and bruises. Um, you know, missing a lot of guys. You know, in our rotation, but uh, we've been able, been able to forge through it. You know, obviously, KP going down is is uh, a big hit to us hopefully uh not too long of a timetable um you know sprained ankle uh, nothing uh, severe at this point they want to give it another 48 to 72 hours to uh, reevaluate uh right now week to week is is what we're what we're saying um, but he was moving well yesterday so hopefully uh we can uh you know push through that timetable and, and get him back as soon as possible no doubt. Um, as you mentioned, it's just been a brutal year. Every time it feels like you guys are getting right, uh, something else seems to pop up. And, and I know for you, like you're an emotionally intelligent person. Um, you you feel this stuff. There's not the coldness that some some athletes and coaches are able to have to it. And I just wonder if there's been kind of any quiet moments where you just look around and go like, what the hell, man? Like, what, 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 why, why is this happening? Can we catch a break? Even if you pull yourself out of it quickly, have you had those moments this year? At times, you know, I think you don't, you don't want to dwell on it because you know, these are situations right. you really can't control. Um, so it's easy to, you know, you want to channel your energies in areas where you can have a direct impact. And of course, we reevaluate, you know, what are we doing, you know, from a practice standpoint, from a pre and post uh, practice, uh, from a player development standpoint, in the weight room. All those things we're kind of continuously looking at to say, well, what are we doing? Are we contributing in any way? Um, and, and a lot of those answers are, I don't believe we are. So, you know, whether you want to call it snake bitten or dumb luck or whatever it is, some of these injuries are, you know, unforeseen, unfortunate in nature. Um, but, you know, the, the constant, um, you know, issues with guys missing games, has been, it's been problematic. And it, at times, yes, it is frustrating. Wes Untel Jr. with us here on the Hoffman Show on the Team 980. Um, of course, the the big story that kind of comes out this weekend uh, around your team, I know this one's not super fun to talk about, but Rui has the monster game on Saturday night, and then uh, after the game kind of says, hey, I just want to be somewhere. In response to questions, uh, in fairness to Rui, it's not like he just came out and was like, I have an announcement to make. In response to questions about trade rumors that have come out, said, I want to be somewhere that wants me. And I just wonder, on a night where he has that performance – do you regret not planting trade rumors earlier if he's going to go out and score 30? No, I don't get caught up in, you know, the rumor mill. You know, I think a lot of that uh, stuff is noise. You know, obviously conversations will be had uh, throughout this period, throughout the year. Uh, you know, Tom and his staff are always looking to upgrade our, um, our roster, try to bolster what we have, and uh, look at some of our weaknesses, try to address, address some needs. And obviously they have to keep the financial piece in mind as well so this time of year is always a difficult time for for players you know that angst of not knowing and you know trying to block out some of the external noise but um you know it's, it's just one of those things part of the business we try to stay task-minded and, and you know keep our eye our eye on the, the next game in front of us Wes Unzel Jr. with us on the team 980 all right basketball questions more fun part of your job um in a league that is very three point happy as three point happy as ever. Brad's like shot chart has shifted over the years. He's gone from a guy that that shoots you know on that higher end of of threes to a guy that's shooting um, you know still shooting a good percentage at thirty five, especially considering he had a rough start to the year. Like to bring that up to thirty five has been impressive, but he he's he's only averaging about four a game. What, why do you think that is that he's kind of zigged and, and what works for you guys where he's become more of a playmaker, less of a three point shooter compared to a lot of stars in the league who are always trying to, to hunt those threes? Right. Well, you know, I think, in the, you know, you look at some of the uh, numbers in his past seasons, he was finding easier threes in transition. You know, a lot of that was, you know, different players were finding him. And now we're putting the ball in his hands. And of course, teams are going to try and heat him up, take him out of it. So, He's bought into, you know, 
playing with a level of, of efficiency, but also being a playmaker. So that, that I think that's a credit to him and his overall development. You know, I think his you know the shot profile will adjust as he kind of gets back, gets his legs under him. He's missed quite a bit of time, but um, you know the, the threes. It's easy to say we need to take more of them. Uh, for us, it's the quality of those threes, the driving kick threes, the paint threes. Uh, last few games, I think we've done a terrific job in that in that area. But uh, he comes out and has eight assists. Um, you know, and he's able to facilitate. And we know fourth quarter in the games, he's going to have the ball in his hands. We're going to trust that he makes the uh, the, the right read. Yeah, he's also shooting 59% on two. So his uh, his efficiency this year has been pretty remarkable uh, for a guy his size. Um, for Kuz, it, it, was there a point in, over the last, at this point, it's basically been 12 months where you just went, oh, this guy, this isn't a hot streak. Like, this is who he is now. Because right. post, post trade deadline last year and post Brad's injury, really, is, is kind of the same, the same time threshold. He really started to kick up the scoring, and it's just continued this year. Was there a point for you where you you stopped thinking it was a bit of a hot streak and went, "This is who this guy is now"? Yeah, I thought uh, you know toward the end of last year, and uh, to his credit, you know he's taking full advantage of opportunities. Uh, you know, maybe his style of play, kind of the role that we put him in, um, and even at, at his position, being able to play some three, four at times this year, even at you know the two. Uh, he's got the versatility, the skill set to uh, impact the game in a lot of different ways. Um, his size, positional size defensively. Um, he's, he's got a great basketball mind and really understands you know, team concepts, opponent personnel. Uh, but his ability to play off the bounce, play pick and roll, you know, a guy at 6'10", be that mobile, uh, is really an asset. So it's, uh, it's one of those things where he didn't have a ton of opportunity to do some of these things, you know, uh, maybe in, in a previous stop. But here has it's been um, not only an opportunity, but I think the style of play and, and how we kind of, the school state offense has really, you know, played to his strength. Wes Unsell Jr. with us here on the Team 980. Wizards tomorrow night face Luka and the Mavs. And Wes, you guys have had, I mean, they're the best players in the sport. So saying like, hey, you've had trouble with some of the best players in the sport. Well, duh, they're the best players in the sport. But guys have have monster, monster games uh, that have obviously cost you guys some wins, uh, whether it be Anthony Davis or, you know, uh, Jokic had a, had a big one. What do you guys try to do to make it difficult and, and kind of keep a player like a Luka within his normal averages and not let him explode like some of the other stars have had on you guys yeah, earlier he, in the he year? Had some, uh, and yeah, he's, he's, really had, he's had some too. <laughs> um, easier said than done. I think you know part of the issue is his usage rate and uh, you know what he's able to do or what he's tasked to do for that team. Um, you know, he facilitates quite a bit of their offense, so he's going to have the ball in his hands. And he's a terrific playmaker. He's got a uh, great size as a point guard. Obviously shoots the three with a high degree of efficiency, especially off the bounce. Um, so it's really tough to speed a guy up like that. So I think the most important thing is take away the easy stuff. Uh, try to defend him without fouling. You know, we have to show different coverages, you know, either to get the ball out of his hands, to keep him from uh, getting the ball, uh, you know, whether that's blitting, blitzing hits, hits on him. Um, and then we got to be clean our rotation because they live and die by the three. And, you know, they're just really going to try and drive, kick, initiate, and find uh, open shooters. So that multiple effort mentality, that cover mentality is going to be key tomorrow. Is that something that you're controlling during the game? Like, are you calling that from the sideline to change up the look, something in the timeouts? You're like, all right, we're going to this, we were in that. Or is that something that, that your guys on the floor are have, or have control of based off game flow or whatever other factors? It's a little bit of both. I mean, I think, you know, these are things that are uh, game plan. They're also, um, I'll direct some of it, and then, you know, they'll read if there's a mismatch or a cross match or a situational thing that's part of the game plan. Then they'll go, um, you know, and do some of these things. So it, it's multi layered. Um, and that's an area I think that's been a lot of growth for this group from last year to this year is our ability to kind of layer our defense. And, you know, I don't know it, it started off a little rough, but. We had a tough 10-game stretch, but, you know, the last 10 games were eighth in defensive you know, rating. So certainly an uptick you know, headed in the right direction. But I do think it's a, a buy-in and also our ability to kind of layer the defense and do multiple things, which has really helped us. Last thing I'll ask you is is how nice has it been or what, what kind of advantage, if there is one, has it been to have Monte this year with you, a guy who obviously knew you very well in Denver? Um, mm -hmm. I talked to him I, last week, two weeks ago, and he said he's really starting to get comfortable now. Um, and I, I think one of the other interesting things he said um, and this is what reminded me of it uh, in, in your last answer is he said, you know, in 
in Denver, Jokic really ran the offense, and it's been an right. adjustment period for him to be more in control here. But I'm also curious how that goes on the defensive side, based off your last answer, where, you know, is he a guy that can key some of that stuff, and having him as someone who's familiar with you, has, has as he's mm-hmm. gotten comfortable, has that kind of helped boost that, that level and gotten you guys in that top 10 defensive rating, like you said, these last couple of weeks? Yeah, you know, I think uh, with Tay, he's, um, you know, doesn't get enough credit for his defense. Uh, you know, they look at his, his stature and, you know, maybe discount him for his size, but he does a great job of being disciplined with his, you know, personnel, does a great job with his game plan, just puts himself in the right position more often than not to make a play. And I think that's just a smart player being able to, you know, read a situation, put himself a step ahead of it. Now it gives you an opportunity to, to react, maybe for better athletes to, you know, different situations. You know, offensively, to your point, I think he's finally – starting to, you know, take a little bit more ownership. You know, you play with a guy like, uh, you know, an MVP caliber player in Jokic for, for four or five years, you get comfortable kind of just, you know, playing off of that guy. And now he's got a quarterback, a little more of it, understanding the flow of the game, you know, uh, how we're being guarded, you know, and, you know, guy gets hot. How do we feature? How do we keep that guy going? Um, and he's got a great feel as far as assist to turnover ratio, does a great job as far as, you know, running the team. But, I think he's starting to settle in offensively himself, uh, you know, kind of get his legs under him and really shooting the ball with confidence. No doubt about it. Wes Unsell Jr., head coach of the Washington Wizards, with us here on the Team 980. Wes, it is always a pleasure to chat. Um, I know you're very busy, uh, so I very much appreciate the time, but hopefully we get a chance to do it again uh, in the not-too-distant future. Look forward to it. Thanks again, Greg. This is West Sunset Jr. Deal, left wing outside the arc, stops, takes a three, it's there! You listen to The Hoffman Show on Team 980. Assassin-like! The Odyssey app.